My guest today is Mike C. Rock Sirocco. He is the CEO of People Building Inc. and the powerhouse behind What Are You Made Of? This is also the name of his podcast. Mike is a performance coach, author, dynamic public speaker, visionary, and thought leader. He has been featured by Yahoo Finance as one of the top business leaders to follow in 2020 and is on the mission to build people. He is driven to inspire others and he measures his success on how he is able to help others achieve greatness. C-Rock had a fire lit in him at an early age. That fire has ignited him with a fierce desire to compel people to see the greatness inside themselves using past life events to fuel their fire. This podcast episode is coming out after the release of his book, which was on May 3rd on Amazon. His book is titled Rocket Fuel, Convert Setbacks, Become Unstoppable. C-Rock was lucky enough to have Grant Cardone write the foreword for his book. In his book, C-Rock offers life-changing lessons and personal transformation by asking yourself, what are you made of? This powerful question will ignite within you a trust to greatness. Learn how to overcome painful past obstacles and achieve a fulfilling life when you're in command of your future. If you're ready to shoot for the stars, C-Rock says, thrust is a must. Once again, I enjoyed this conversation. I felt when speaking with Mike, we were like old high school friends. We just had a real connection and I really enjoyed talking with him. Once again, thanks for listening to my podcast. Now sit back and enjoy this great conversation with Mike C-Rock Sirocco. Hey, welcome everybody. Today, my guest is Mike C. Rock Sirocco. I'm really excited to have this talk with him, and I know you're going to enjoy this. Mike, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I like to start every interview that I go on with gratitude and just really express that to you for allowing me to come on and share with you. And thank you to your audience for listening and showing up. Absolutely, man. I love that. Gratitude is a huge thing in my life. So uh, I'm right there with you. I appreciate it. I think it's important that everyone, their, their backstory makes up sort of what, what they become in life. You know, it doesn't define who they become, but there is something about what has happened throughout your life leading up to where you are now that has molded this person that you've become. And I right. am interested in that. And, and I always start with this, just like you always start, um, what, what is it? What are you made of? Right. That's what you, yeah, you start to turn your head sideways. I love Perfect. it. <laughs> uh, you know, no, you know, I came from a broken home. I don't remember my parents together, Joe. Um, I grew up around a lot of broken people, alcoholics, drug addicts, people suffering from anxiety, depression. Um, my grandmother committed suicide after taking too much anti-anxiety or depression medication. Um, you know, a lot of things I went through as a kid, just watching just destruction. And, you know, I think that decisions we make and uh, focuses that we have either go towards living and surviving or destruction. And I was seeing the destruction part and I wasn't okay with that. And I didn't want to accept that. So I would always try to help people switch it around, even from a young age. Uh, I, I was just not okay with, with what I was seeing. And, you know, I, my mom, when I was three or four years old, I just remember her always telling me that I inspired her and I was going to be a leader. And I think subconsciously, subconsciously she was doing that because she knew what was going on in the family and knew that I was going to have to deal with some things. And so I had that programmed into me. So I was always just looking for people to help, looking for people to show them a better way and not buying into what they were telling themselves. And so, uh, you know, that's just something I experienced at a young age. And really when it came down, what lit my fire and what, what I'm made of, I would say is rocket fuel because, uh, when I was eight, my mom was moving on to her third marriage and I wasn't really up for going into another man's house and learning another man's rules. Mm. And, so I decided to give my dad a try who was moving on to his second marriage. And at that time, uh, you know, I broke my mom's heart by doing that. Um, I didn't know that at the time, but she told me later on that, you know, she cried herself to sleep at night when I left and I was her first child, you know? And uh, when I moved to my dad, everything seemed fine at first, but after three years, you know, during that three years, uh, there was a lot of conflict, you know, there's a, when you add step parents into the mix, anytime that stuff happens, the kid is the only link between the past relationship. And so a lot gets taken out on the children and anybody that's been in a broken home and dealt with child support, custody battles, every other weekend thing, step parents, jealous things, like just 
everybody that's been through that knows what I'm talking about. And so a lot of that time during from eight to 11, I was experiencing a lot of emotional, psychological abuse, threats, things like that, that were really probably not directed towards me, but uh, came my way. And at nine years old, I would sleep with my baseball bat a lot of nights. Wow. Because I was scared. And no kid should have to go through that, through that, of course. But that's what went into making me. Like, I, I went through these things. I went through court child uh, psychologists to see if I was mature enough at, at a young age to figure out who I wanted to live with. Like, all that kind of stuff. Make and, your own decisions, all of that. That crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And seeing parents fight yep. and, you know, just, just not, not happy environment. And so that's what went into me. But the thing is, is that I was always on the right side of the track. Thank God. I was always looking at how can I be better? Not being accepting of it. Let me look at the bright side of things. Let me look at, okay, what is this doing? And, and how can I take advantage of using this to better life? So one weekend I was coming home from my mom's house. And, and, and sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Was this all in Maryland or all back on the East Coast? Or? Uh, this is in Pennsylvania outside of Philly. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, okay. so, so uh, my mom was living in Maryland. And, you know, when I got to about 10, some, 10 years old, give or take, I was coming home from my mom's house one day, one weekend after being there, and my stomach was in knots. I was anxious. I didn't want to go back. And my mom was, you know, seeing something was wrong. She questioned me, and I told her. You know, when you go through abuse, uh, anybody that's been through abuse, well, you can probably relate to this, that one, you don't just like to share it because you're afraid that people won't believe you. Uh, two, you kind of been, you're so accustomed to going through it. You're not sure how bad it really is. Somebody on the outside would be like, holy cow, you're dealing with that? Really? Yeah. But as you're going through it, you just think it's ordinary. Another thing, maybe you're embarrassed that you let it go on for that long. And then the weirdest thing is that you're actually concerned with your abuser. You're like, what will happen if I share this? to them. Yep. You know, just a weird thing. So I finally came, came to the realization that I need to share that. My mom said, you know what, I'm going to get you out of there. I'm going to file court papers. You don't need to be going through that. That's not ordinary. You, you need to get, you know, in a better situation. She said, but if you do, if I do this, you need to stick to your guns. You got to be like really, really firm because they're going to try to talk you out of it. And in life, when you believe in something, you got to stick to your guns, man, because people will have agendas and they're going to try to talk you out of it and move one way or the other. And at the end of the day, if you do that, you're not going to live the life you want to live. So she reminded me that, you know, 10 years old, you know, filling my head with great stuff, you know. And uh, I went back home that day and waited and waited. Weeks went by and waited for those court papers to be delivered. You know, I just knew it was going to happen. And I didn't, didn't tell my dad about it, of course. And then finally, one day I come home from school and the tension in the house, you could feel it. Like it was, something was up and I knew what the deal was. Mm -hmm. I had a feeling at first I thought I did something wrong. You know, I'm looking around like, what did I do today? Did I do something wrong? <laughs> he had these papers in his hand, my dad did. Huh? And, I, and I knew like, oh, here we go. And he told me to go to my room. Now, my dad was my hero. He had a successful masonry business, very hard worker, big forearms, rough hands. Yeah. You know, you tell he's a hard worker and he always carried a wad of hundred dollar bills in his pocket. <laughs> and I thought that was the coolest thing. And it had a rubber band around. So it. did my father. It's so funny. Yeah. yeah it must be the last name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'd always show me, you know, the money, you know, I thought it was a cool hundred dollar bills. Yeah. You know? So he came back and confronted me and I didn't get into this discussion with him because my mom said, stick to your gun. So he proceeded to tell me how my mom would have guys coming in and out. Why would you want to go there? You have it made here. Uh, you have everything you need. They're poor. They don't have anything. You know, and my mom was, I mean, we, we lived in a house that was probably twenty five, thirty thousand dollars house, broken down cars in the driveway. You know, um, we went on vacation to the Jersey shore, yeah. but we'd stayed at a rundown motel, one room, four kids, two adults. And we were at, I just remember this the other day, we were actually able to bring some friends with us sometimes, which just makes it like, just, I can't even, I don't even remember <laughs> how that worked. And we would take black trash bags as our suitcase. So, you know, sharing my story, by the way, but back in the day, I was kind of embarrassed by that. I, I just didn't like I didn't want to share that, you know, yep. but I started to realize that the more you share your story, the more impact you can have and the more people that can relate to it and maybe change a life or two yep. or millions. Yep. You know, so I, I started sharing that, but uh, just to wrap it up real quick. So when I did confirm that my dad took that wad of hundred dollar bills out of his pocket peeled one off, crumpled it up and threw it at me and said, if you, that's the case and you want to move there, you're going to need this when you're living on the streets with your mother one day. And I remember that 30 some years I lived off that spark that was lit right there because I'm stubborn. My shirt today, you can see it's stubborn, mm -hmm. <laughs> unyielding. It's a good thing when it's on the right thing. Um, 
But, you know, I, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to let that happen. And so 30 some years, I was driving off that spark until two years ago. I really subconsciously, I was doing that. I really realized two years ago, wait a minute here. There's something magical that's going on. My life keeps going on its upward trajectory, no matter what happens, no matter screw ups, letdowns, disappointments, what is happening here? And what I found, which I wrote in my book, that's coming out Monday, May 3rd on Amazon rocket fuel. I was taking everything that would stop normal human beings or slow them down, storing it in my fuel tank instead of my trunk where it would weigh you down and converting it into rocket fuel for my future to become unstoppable. And I found that, that, and I realized, wait a minute, this is not just a concept. This isn't a law. This is a law. If you do this, you really are unstoppable to live in the life of your dreams until you're plucked from this planet. So that's why I decided to write this book that Grant Cardone wrote the forward because it was so powerful. I got to get this message out to people. So that's a little bit about the story. Uh, there's, there's, you know, that's the short version actually. <laughs> no, that's all good. That's exactly what I wanted. The only piece that I still need to figure out is what did you do? How did you figure out what you wanted to do in, in life in that middle section of where people go to college or they get a job or what, what did you yeah. do during that time? Well, I played football and I didn't drink any alcohol or party all through high school. I played football, baseball, wrestled, but I, football was my love. Mm -hmm. And I just, I always thought about, man, I want to go to Ohio state and play football. Cause I just loved their team. I watched them play Michigan all the time growing up and I never grew tall enough. <laughs> I never grew fast enough. I, I feel your pain. <laughs> so, yeah. So five, six and three quarters, you got to be really, really fast if you're five, six and three quarters. Yeah. So I decided to go to division three. I played football in college, studied business. Uh, but when I got to college, Joe, I lost my focus and I started chasing girls and partying, which I never did before. Mm -hmm. And it was like Disney World at first. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And I just lost it, man. I, for five, six, seven years in that range, I was just, all I cared about was parties, where are the girls at? And I need to be around people. And uh, so that's, that's the lead up to that. And then eventually I met my wife who, who just the commitment to my wife straightened me up and I was off the races. I think that my thing with my wife right now, I joke with her all the time is, I have to out, I have to out earn her spending on Amazon and deliveries <laughs> to the house. So it's constantly like this the other day, she's like, I, I look, I go up in the kitchen and there's a piece of decking, like the composite decking. Uh oh, you know, the yeah, deck's going to be redone. And I'm like, I already told you, no, not right now. And she's like, oh, I already had somebody come over and measure it. Oh. Like, oh, so right back down into the cave. That's I call this area, my studio, my cave. I got to go make some money now. That's so you funny. Know, great motivator. That is awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, that's, and where was college? Uh, Salisbury University in, in Maryland. Okay. And then ever since you've stayed in Maryland. Yeah. But now you're in Ocean City. For a period of time. Yep. We, uh, we moved to Ocean City now. Yeah. Yep. Which is beautiful. I love it there. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I'm an East Coaster. I'm originally from New York. Oh, cool. So cool. Um, so this leads right into the question that since you're going to do the decking, are you still doing, are you still in the mortgage business? Because that's your, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have a, I have a division that I run with three best friends. They take care of the day to day operations. Yep. And it's a, uh, large division under nation's lending. And uh, we run it like our own business and it's great people, great culture. It's just phenomenal. And you've been doing that quite a long time, right? I've saw, you know, you've gotten uh, rated as, you know, number, number one in Yahoo finance or right. I mean, you have, yeah. So 2006, I got into it yep. and started as a loan officer and then just went and built from two employees and started a branch and division and two employees up to 40. Wow. That's incredible. Okay, cool. So when did you make this shift of, and you talk about this in one of your videos about sharing your story and you share, you also mentioned it when you were giving your story, how important that is. And when did you make this, when did you allow yourself to say, okay, I have this business and I have great partners and people to run this business. When did you decide to at least start your company now with what you're doing with your podcast and your book and everything. What was the trigger for that? Yeah. So early 2019, um, my stepfather, George, who took over from my dad when I was 11, uh, he was a great guy and he passed away in 2019 and um, of a heart attack suddenly. And I wrote about this in the book, the story about how we found out and everything. It's, it's, uh, you know, but, but at the end of the day, he had a passion when he was passionate about something like football, baseball, hunting, fishing, he would get up and just go nuts, like deep voice. Like everybody couldn't like really understand him. He was like, so passionate. Like, <laughs> they would be like taken aback by him. And when he passed away, you know, a couple of weeks after he passed away, I had this passion or energy, something spirit come inside of me. Like I just felt different. 
And I realized that I, I wasn't playing a big enough game in life. You know, I, I was doing well in the business and the mortgages and all that, but it's just, that's not the game that I was designed for. I was playing small and I'd started to realize, wait a minute, I need to open myself up to other opportunities because if I just focus here, this is where I'm going to stay. And I was having truths that I was telling myself and beliefs that I was telling myself is that this is it for me. This is, I'm stuck, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I don't necessarily love the mortgage business. It's great and all that, but at the end of the day, I, I just had a bigger, bigger calling. And so I started trying to figure out, okay, how can I get known in this calling of building people? Cause that's what I actually do at the mortgage business. It wasn't the mortgage business. It was, I was building people. I was helping develop people. Mm -hmm. And so I said, how can I get known um, more in a bigger, bigger scale, my state instead of just my town? Then I was like, that's not big enough. So I'll come up short. How about the country and then the globe? And then I was like, you know what? If I started really expanding my mind, I'm like, if there's aliens, which I've never seen one, <laughs> but if there is, let, let me see if I can get aliens to know who I am mm -hmm. and really go for that and then come up a little short and I'll be all right. And that's the way I started thinking about things and started trying to impact and share my story with tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions of people. How can I do that? And I started to obsess about that. And that's when the podcast came, the book idea came. And then I just started networking like an animal and going on, you know, I've done 300 interviews in the last year. Wow. That's crazy. So just really leaning into it. And that's how it all started. And then now I'm into tech, into the tech world where I'm developing a tech product. I co-founded a company and also we have other we're, we're creating a tech um, portfolio of other co-founders, non-tech entrepreneurs that have ideas that think that they can never do it. They usually go to the grave with those things. Mm -hmm. and we're bringing them into the world and giving them the resources they need to actually co-found their companies and creating unstoppable people. Because my mission, Joe, is all people are unstoppable to live in the life of their dreams. And so everything I do, I filter through that mission. That's so cool, man. You And it's so funny because you you hit it right on the head with with the same thing with me. It's like, you know, I have a successful business, but I know it's not my calling. It's not what I was put here to do. And, and everything that I do should be so much more impactful and so much bigger. And I've had this, you know, I had the conversation with David Meltzer and at the same time, he brings you back in focus and he's like, yeah, but you should know that you, are, you have everything you need. You just got to get out of your own way. It's, it's not a matter that, you should focus on wanting more. You have it all. You're just, you're literally getting in your own way of getting it done. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's uh, the truths that we tell ourselves. We're living an illusion. We let the illusions that we have based on our beliefs and past experiences. And we, we let that affect us and limit us and block us. And really at the end of the day, you know, we'd rather explain our life instead of actually intervening in it. <laughs> we like to explain with excuses, you know, and justify things and, and, you know, at the end of the day, man, we just tell ourselves what we can tell ourselves that helps us survive. Uh, and to me, that's not good enough because you're going to always come up a little short. So why not thrive and really go after it? And, you know, there's not everybody that's going to be able to do what we do. So why don't we take it up and launch and get, get really abundance, like go after abundance so that we can help other people and distribute this information um, to other people. So that's the kind of things that I, I started thinking. I, I started hanging around people that coaching and mentoring me the right way, thinking big, you know, also, you know, still like Dave Meltzer talks about, you got to be happy now, it's yeah. not like later. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't want to go down the Grant Cardone path. I, I, I follow him. I love the stuff that he does. I know that it fits the mold for um, a lot of people that are in the real estate world. And, but yeah. I also know that he's doing a lot of other things, but how, you know, he wrote the forward to your book, which is amazing how, how much did he influence you making this jump to doing what you're doing now? So when George died, my stepfather, um, my brother was reading the 10 X rule and he said, Mike, you got to read this book. This guy sounds just like you. <laughs> yeah, right, I'll take a look at it. And I started, I saw Grant before in like pictures, but I thought he was like a real estate. Yep. I thought he trained realtors. Yep. I, I wasn't even sure. Yep. Right. So I read the book and I'm like, Holy cow, this guy's speaking to me. He's gone through similar situations that I've been through. Yep. Like I can, totally relate. And, and uh, I, but, but, but the big thing was about it was I've always had this big think, but I got cocooned for a while by people that I surrounded myself with that were broken thinkers, broken mindset, people, uh, people that didn't fit my culture, but they produced. So I kept them around and people that quit on me. And I let that affect me personally. And I got into this situation where I was invalidated me myself. I felt invalidated on the, being the animal that I actually am. Mm -hmm. And so when I was reading that book, I'm like, wait a minute, this this shows me something. I'm not the crazy one. 
those people are the crazy ones. I have an animal, so I need to unleash it. So I was able to unleash the beast. And that's what it did for me. And then I just immersed myself in his content, hung around with all his people, um, built relationships inside his company because I just want to be around those types of people. Yep. Great, great friendships. Like I said, uh, Jared Glant is a friend of mine. And I just, uh, you know, I'm proud to have them, them in my, in my circle. And so when, it, when I wrote the book, the book actually came from an idea that I got while I was interviewing Grant on my podcast about, I asked him the question, what would it take to get into outer space? Not like literally, right? But figuratively speaking, getting away from all the gravity and negative suppressors and people and things that can mess with you. When, when can you get that amount of money or that amount of whatever it is? And he said, people aren't ready for that discussion. He said, that's just something the answer doesn't, people don't like the answer to that question. And I'm like, well, what would it take? You know? And I started thinking about rocket fuel. Rocket fuel is what it would take. Taking all that stuff, converting it and fueling your way up there. And then once you do that and you remove all that stuff out of your way, there's nothing that stops you and you become unstoppable and indestructible. And that's the thought that started going through my head. And I started obsessing about it. And I'm like, I got to write this. So uh, when I did that, I'm like, the only person that would make sense to be writing the forward for this book is Grant. I don't know if he does forwards. I don't know if he charged me. I don't know anything. I'm going to make it happen though. And that's what I started thinking all the time. I just dwelled on it, wrote it down and book is almost done. And I made a phone call and there's some details that went into doing that. And I just, it got, it got done. And his name's on the cover of the book is forward written by yeah. Grant Cardone. Yeah. So um, that adds the credibility that I, I may not have had before, but the content in the book is just so powerful, man. It's, it's just, I actually, Joe, I can be honest with you about something like, like total. I'm always honest, but like just totally transparent. I read that book over and over again during the edited process. Right. Yeah. And I got so sick of it and uh, because I've read it so much, but then I haven't read it in a while. And I went back and my team, we go through in the morning and we'll pick a passage to read out of it just to see what, what we come upon. And I don't even remember writing some of the stuff. I'm just like, wow, this is like, this is really good stuff. That's cool. So it's a weird, yeah. it's a weird mind game when you're writing a book and then to see the actual finished product. Um, it's, it, it's, it's a good time, man. That's really cool. Yeah. I look forward to reading it. I, it's, you know, just talking with you, I can tell we're in sync on a lot of this stuff. Uh, you're ahead of me cause you, you wrote a book and I haven't done it yet. Um, but I know that it's a good process to go through. Uh, where did you figure out where you wanted to start in the book in regards to your life? So, you know, I started sharing my story uh, that I share with you. And I have other parts of my life in there, too, that, that are just crazy, blow people's minds. But I, I really what I did was I started writing um, in my phone while I was on airplanes. Okay. And I would just write ideas in my phone and then I would write stories that happened in my life. And then my podcast, we transcribed the podcast episodes, the first few that were monologue style. And then we just created a framework and then it doesn't look anything like it started. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I got started with it and just started, you know, what kind of, what, what went into me? What am I made of? And I just went into that and started sharing it. And then the lessons that broke off from each of those things. Cause uh, you know, a lot of people have been through, there's people that have been through a lot more than I have. But my story is pretty like crazy. Like there's some stuff that happened to me that nobody could imagine going through. But I'm still here, brother. And I'm still going I, hard. I hear you. <laughs> I see that. And and you brought up a good point in one of the videos that I watched where you said people discount their story, right? They don't think, why would anybody care? It's not that special. When were you able to actually take your own thoughts as part of your own story and make that switch where you said, wait a second. No, what I've gone through is important. If it could help one person in the world, that's value enough. I mean, when did you, or did you not ever doubt that your story was powerful? No. So I would, uh, <clears throat> I never shared it. And I saw Pete Vargas share his story on uh, the 10 X growth conference stage in 2019. I'm sitting there watching and, and this is the first big stage. I think that Pete was on, he was nervous and scared and his face, you could tell he's sweating and he would tell you this. I'm, I'm friends with him. Mm -hmm. so it's not something I'm talking about, Yeah, no, no, no. but I thought to myself, I'm watching that. I didn't know who he was at that time, but he was telling a story about his father and he was like really connecting with me and their relationship and how he grew up in a rough spot. And, he, and, they, and then they came back together and how it all worked out. And I'm like, wow, this is just like powerful. I felt like everybody else disappeared in the place and it was just him talking to me. And I'm like, I need to learn how to do that. And if he can do it, I know I can do it. That's honestly wow. what went through my head. 
And I told the guys I was with when we got in the car afterwards, I'm like, I'm going to be on that stage. I'm going to share my story one day. And um, I, I know I can do it. And so then I started sharing the story to one person, two people, five people. And they were like, wow, that's, I really can relate to that. Then I said, well, shit, I need to go to 10 million people mm -hmm. if I can do it. And how can I do that? And that's when I started obsessing about getting known and sharing that story. And, you know, I was able to talk to Pete after that. And uh, I actually learned from him how to share your story. And, um, but I shared that, that, that story about seeing him in, in, in the audience and how everybody just disappeared and how he connected with me. And uh, so it's pretty powerful stuff. Yeah, that's really powerful. That, that's got to be a little eerie to just be sitting there and all of a sudden it, it's just like a movie where everything around you blurs out and it's just the yep. two of you. Yeah, yeah. that's incredible. Um, something real light, light question I have for you, the logo. Is it, does the logo, I'm going to take a guess and I'm probably going to be wrong and you're going to say, well, nice try, Joe, but does it have anything to do with the linchpin? So the, the C rock load, the blue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just an upside down C and then two R's that are, you know, for C rock. Okay. And then it just has a little dude in there holding up the world. If you can see. Okay. Him. Yeah. So that's what it has. No, it doesn't have, okay. I can't see that. What, I, so only because there. when I, I read some stuff and you talking about, you know, in, in some of the verbiage that I read about you and on your website, you mentioned yeah. the word linchpin. Uh, the con I can't remember the context, but it was, it, yeah. I, no, you know what? I, 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 and then when I looked at a picture of a linchpin, I was like, wait, it is round. I see what a picture of a linchpin looks like. <laughs> see, no, 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 I have you, you know, thinking. Like <laughs> yeah, I got to look at this because maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe it does. So I didn't design the logo myself. I had professionally done. Yeah. And uh, maybe he had that in mind as well. Uh, only um, because it's, uh, I mean, you could kind of say it a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, it's no, round with the, that. with the thing through it. And I'm thinking, okay, well maybe it's kind of hinting yeah. towards it. And, and I saw no, it was really just the C yeah. and two R and holding up the world and helping lift up the world. That's cool. That's well, like, that's even cooler. Yeah, so a, you can throw yeah. my idea right out the window. No, I, I like that though. <laughs> I like that. Um, do I do some upfront investigation of, you know, the person I'm talking to and the life and all of that stuff. And, and I saw that you, you know, cause you're doing mortgages and I saw that Jennifer is in real estate and I don't know if yeah. she still is, but yeah, she is. So that's a really cool synergy between the two of you. First of all, I think that probably works really well, but just for the, the people in the audience who have a great relationship with their significant other, how important has that been in the balance of your life, especially what you went through as a young you know, a young man being able to have that support and, and you found the love of your life and it's, you know, there's that whole synergy there between you. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's everything. I mean, like I said, I made a joke about trying to out earn <laughs> her spending with that, but at the end of the day, she does a great job. She did. She was a stay at home mom for a while until our youngest was in school. And then uh, I said, you know what, I'm going to try to, you know, we got to figure out something cause I'm giving deals away uh -huh. to people. Yep. And you know, it would be great if you get licensed and she ended up doing it. And she's just the type that if she gets into something, she goes hard with it. And she did great. The first two years, just fantastic. I didn't even realize how much money she made last year until I saw her 1099. <laughs> like, wow, you did great. But um, she's just phenomenal. And it aligns well with our business. Obviously, I don't do mortgages much anymore. Yep. I don't do it at all. I just I, I work on the business maybe an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, my team runs the day to day. They do a fantastic job. And um, so, but it aligns well, obviously. And then a lot of our people, um, their spouse got their real estate license too, because it aligns so well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I, I, but, but at the end of the day, we are, you know, I'm very clear with what I'm trying to do, my dreams. And she is clear on the fact of her dreams and the fact that she's willing to support me and, and run through fire for me. And, yeah. and uh, it's just a great feeling because I can't do it without her, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I just wanted to sort of bring that up because I think it's important. I have the same sort of relationship with Joelle and my significant awesome. other. So it's, to me, it's super important. And with what happened with COVID, you know, a lot of things just stopped, right. And, and changes were made. And so she got furloughed from uh, doing her day-to-day -day job and has not been brought back, but she's always had this dream of doing photography. And so now I basically have said to her, you are not going back. And you are going to, from this point forward until whenever the world ends for you, you're going to follow your dream. So 
I think it's important, right? And, and to support yeah. each other. And it's nice to see that you get you have that same relationship. Um, yeah, so yeah. so so important that it aligns. I mean, so much so much conflict comes from just not being you know aligned with the mission. Yep. You know. Yep. And uh, I think that people need to realize that their personal dream, their mission, I call it their purpose, their mission, is it's more important than anything when it comes down to it. It really is. Yep. And that's why it's so important to share that with your partner to make sure that they're on the same page with you. So let's talk about that. I'm sure I'm probably older than you at this point, but we're at yeah, definitely. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I'm 40, I'm 44. So I'm, I'm uh, Oh my gosh. I'm so old. <laughs> I turned, but I am going on 18 years of marriage this May. So congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah. Joel and I are 20, I think at this point. Okay. Cool. Um, Congrats. yeah, I turned 59 this past February. So Oh man. Um, you know, I can't tell. I really can't. Yeah. Tell. Well, thank you. Maybe that's why you, that's why you shave your head because that way you can't see any. That's hairs. exactly, that's <laughs> exactly right. Thank God my eyebrows I, are hey, still dark. Bro, look, I'm with you though. I'm with you. <laughs> so, um, do you ever look at where you are now and you look back and go, I mean, and I think we, we've talked about this with some of the great people like you know, we can bring up David Meltzer again, because I he's just he's like one of my mentors. I, I love the guy to death. Yeah, he's awesome. You know, what is what's the saying? Something like it, the, the the teacher, the teacher appears when the student is ready. Yeah, right. The student, yeah. 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 Teachers. Yep. Yeah, exactly. uh, and it's the same thing with life. Like you things come when the time is right. And I, some people would argue against that. Some people would say, you know, whatever. But you just started on this path now, right? Something flipped when your father, when your stepfather passed away, it said there's, you know, and you might've felt it your whole life because you, people like you and I always were pulled towards something, right? We're entrepreneurs. We've always worked towards a greater goal of whatever. Do you ever look back and go, God, I wish I had started this sooner. Or is it like, no, it's, this is the time. This is the right time. It's happening now. Um, you know, I'm interested in what your thought process is on that. Well, I'm curious that you, the, asking the question, you must have felt some kind of feeling about that in the past, maybe. I, I constantly go like I had I had chased another dream up until this point, and that dream yeah. didn't happen for me. And I openly admit all the time that I didn't put in the work to make that dream happen. I, I'm yeah. I'm a trained you know, I went to college for music. So my whole life has been surrounded by music. And one day I was going to tour the world and be this famous drummer for let, and I always use the example because I love his music, John Mayer. Yeah. That never happened for me because I know now I can look myself in the mirror and go, you didn't put in the work. You didn't put in the 10, the commitment. Yeah. You yeah. didn't do the 10,000 hours. You, you know, yeah. you would rather had gone down to the college campus bar and had a bunch of beers and chicken wings with your buddies yep. instead of going back into the practice room and spending another four hours at night. So I, I am fine with, I get it now, but now I'm trying to, to, to take my, the rest of my life and make it amazing and live much yeah. bigger. And so I am at the stage to, right now of doing that change, shifting mm -hmm. my, my frame of mind. I know the world is abundant. I know that it, everything, it, you know, I just have to look towards the good of everything. And, and the more I focus on the good and the abundance and the gratitude, more of it just keeps coming in. And in the last two months, it's been incredible for me. And so, and it's, I always was the, oh, what was me? Like I work my ass off. Why am I not getting that? Why am I not yeah. doing that? So yeah. that's why I asked you this question yeah. when that, yeah. you know, was the shift with your, with your father, your stepfather passing away and you just saying, when you said you felt it in your heart, you were like, I need to do something bigger. Was that the pivotal point for this? Yeah, it was. And, and I did look back and be like, man, I cannot believe when I started finding out things and becoming aware of things, I cannot believe I didn't start this sooner. I didn't know that any, like, I just felt like I had wasted. I went through a period of time where I felt like I wasted time and time is so valuable. And I said, you know what? I don't know how much longer I have on this planet, but you know what? At this point, the window keeps shrinking. I got to pick up my urgency. I got to move faster. I got to jam in more and be louder and be more impactful and be just more intense than I would have had to if I started a long time ago. That's all. And so at first I did look back and with some regret, but then I quickly got out of that and said, okay, what do we got to do to get this done in the, the window that I do have left? So yeah, I, I, I definitely, and that was the pivoting pivotal point. 
Um, of course, working towards it my whole life, not knowing it. Yep. You know, there's a story in the Bible and they made a movie about it with Steve Carell about Noah's Ark. You know, Noah was told over hundred some years he took to build this big ark and he didn't really know why he was doing it. He was just being told to do it by God. If you believe in God, mm-hmm. which I do, or it's in- intuition or is whatever. And he got these animals and people were laughing at him and discouraging him. And he just kept doing it anyway. And, and building a ship in a place where there's never rain. <laughs> right. And it didn't make sense. It didn't seem to make sense at the moment, but he kept doing it and he kept being committed and doing it and doing it and doing it. And before you know it, the rain came, washed everybody away. And he survived with all the animals that he had and his family. And so I look at that lesson and I, I've started to see this now I've started to see that the things when I'm committed and obeyed to my purpose and my mission, and I filter things through that, whether it's the people I hang out with, my actions, my words, my thoughts, my environment, when I start to filter it through that mission, I'm obeying what I'm supposed to be doing and things just magically work out. And I start to see opportunities everywhere. But when I don't do that, they're missing. And so you don't need to know what the end game is necessarily. You should be shooting for something, but just be looking for the opportunities as long as you're obeying your mission and filtering everything through your purpose or mission or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. All right. Well, that makes me feel good that I'm not the only one that had some regrets. So thank you for being vulnerable and saying that because I definitely have gone through it. And I have, like I said, I'm older than you. So think of, you know, think of (laughs) of us are alone. alone. (laughs) Okay. I've, I've, anything that you go through, there's somebody else out there experiencing it for sure. Right. And I think that's what you're a lot of what you talk about is it's so important to share your story because it literally could help one person, which would be a huge help. You never know where they are in their state of mind. Um, And if it lifts them, that's awesome. But imagine being able to help tens of thousands of millions of billions of people. Right. So I understand that's what the goal is for people like us who want to do that. So I, I wish you the best of luck in doing that. And, uh, and same with myself, I got to get it done. <laughs> That's right. Okay. That's right. So you said something earlier about the book, which is the name of the book is rocket fuel. And you said it's May, May 3rd. Yeah. May 3rd, Monday, May 3rd, it's coming out on Amazon and, uh, you know, it should be a bestseller based on, we have, we pre-sold it. Yep. So, um, I'm thinking that it's not going to have a problem being a bestseller, number one bestseller. Yep. Well, we shall see, but I'm going to do a bunch of lives that day, Instagram and Facebook lives and just have some fun with it. Cool. And uh, yeah, celebrate. Okay, cool. So let's talk about it a little bit. Um, sure. You said something earlier that I thought was really cool, which was taking, you said something about taking whatever comes in and not putting it in the trunk, but putting it in the fuel tank and making rocket fuel. So explain that yeah, again to me, because I, I, lo- I loved it when yeah. you said it, I was like, and I didn't even write it down. Yeah. I was like, no, that's got to go up here in my brain. Uh, so I, I would love to well, hear that again. Well, when you want something in life and things come your way to stop it or slow you down, if you remove them one thing, obviously that's going to help, but removing is not good enough for me. So I take all that stuff, haters, people that discourage me, laughed at me, what I'm trying to do, screw ups of my own, people trying to screw me, all that stuff. I just store it in my fuel tank. And it's usually people put it in their trunk and that weighs them down. You know, most people quit on their dreams because other people are talking mm-hmm. about them and saying, no, oh, you're not the same. Why are you doing that? You know, all kinds of different things. I take all that and say, you know what? Like here, here's an example. And by the way, I stored in my tank, my fuel tank to convert it into rocket fuel rather than my trunk where it weighs me down. And some of the people closest to me, you know, like some of my business partners and friends and they know who they are. I talked to them about it and I said, you know what? You keep saying the stuff like, Hey, why don't you go do your podcast? Hey, uh, you know, just this stupid digs like that. Right. At the end of the day, they're trying to get at me, but they're really just talking about themselves, reflecting upon themselves and the fact that they should be doing that. And they're not. And so I know that. And I tell people, you know, you want to say that great. You're not going to achieve what you think you're going to achieve because all you're doing is giving me more fuel and I'm going to push it even harder. So when somebody says that to me, I'll, I'll do it on purpose where I'll push harder and then I'll show it up in their face a little bit more too about if they're seeing too many posts on Instagram. I'll make sure I send it to them in a direct message <laughs> Just because that way it shuts them off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. I don't understand. I don't understand like people want to bring you down to their level, right? We deal with that all the time. And, and, and social media has done so much to expose those people. Um, and I just don't understand why they can't be happy for you, but they, inst- well, they, they can't because so it, 
I've, I've already realized this in my mind. Now I know this, it's not them personally, it's their mind. And what's happening is they just, they, they, the, the, the subconscious mind just justifies where you are. It's trying to justify the truths that you told yourself. And when something comes in to threaten that you have to basically their, their, uh, things fire off to, to protect their subconscious beliefs. And so it's not really them personally that's doing it. And that's why you can't take it personal. You need to understand it. And then when they're doing it, you need to lay it out to them and let them know, Hey, listen, I know what's going on here. I get it. You're where you are and you're trying to justify where you are. And you're saying this stuff to me. I don't take it personal, by the way, I use it as fuel. So thank you. <laughs> and if you want to say more, continue to give me fuel. Great. But I would rather be able to help you un break the, like, just open up your truths and, and change them, change your beliefs and expand your mind and, and see what you can achieve instead of worrying about what I'm doing. And that's the way I handle it. I don't really get fired up or angry or take it personal. Um, it's just a situation where they're going through it. And I think we've all been through it. So I'm, I think I'm more understanding of it, Yeah. but I will not, but Joe, if they don't listen to me, when I talk about that, I will not spend time with them because I'm not going to spend time with people that don't align with my mission. Totally agree. So the book rocket fuel coming out May 3rd on Amazon. Who is this book for specifically? This is for people that have gone through things in life and they feel like they keep getting held back or slowed down by things or stopped. And they're just, they're just done with it. They're, they're at the point right now where they've had enough. They're getting sick of where they are and they want to do something about it. And they are looking for that breakthrough. That's that, that superpower. Because really it is, it's like John Maxwell has leadership laws. This thing is so powerful and I validated it so, so thoroughly that it's a law. It's the rocket fuel law. And so it's for people that are just sick and tired of being where they are and they want to advance. They want to have a better life, life of their dreams. And I believe, like I said, my mission is all people are unstoppable to live in the life of their dreams. And so that's who it's for. Yeah. And I saw that um, it seems like part of the focus is about past pains and obstacles and how you, you basically help with the book to, to change, take people and, and turn it around and say, you know, like you're saying, use those things as rocket fuel to get you to the next level. So don't lean on that. Don't have them in the trunk. Don't have them as baggage, but instead take what you've learned, take what has happened and convert it to rocket fuel by doing whatever you talk about in the book, yeah. right? Yeah. The magic, the magic, here's the magic, right? The magic is when you have something happen and you get that feeling in your chest, that's where it hits me, by the way, like something mm -hmm. bad happens. I'm like, oh. The speed to which you can recognize that and convert it and look for opportunity. That's when you master the rocket fuel law. That's what it's all about. The longer time it takes, the more doubt creeps in. Yeah more negative energy creeps in the more victimhood creeps in and the missed opportunities happen during that period. So you want to shrink that window to as little and short as possible. Cause we all feel it. We're all going to still feel it when something bad happens at first, but recognize it as fast as possible. And then start to look for the opportunity and not play the victim role, take responsibility for everything. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I want to honor the time we have that we said we were going to do an hour. So I want to just go through this real quick. So you have your own podcast, which is what are you made of, which is on the wall behind you, where you interview, uh, I assume, you know, other entrepreneurs and people that have amazing stories to tell and share. Um, you release one a week, twice a week. What, how many? Well, it started out once a week and then I had so many that I was doing, I had to do two a week. So right now we're on a two a week schedule. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I just load up. I, I go hard, man. Like I, if I see somebody I want on the show, I go after them like an animal, <laughs> I get them on the show and I don't care how many I've already had in the can. I just still just keep loading them up. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah. So, okay, cool. Um, besides that you are, you do some performance coaching, correct? You do some coaching in general. Yeah. Yep. Doing some speaking. You're going to continue to, to build that, that part of your career. You're going to be on stage with Grant one of these days. Well, I, I, yeah, but so the coaching part, I want to do the coaching part. I'm switching that into, you know, I still have a couple clients, but really focusing on the tech side of things and developing these entrepreneurs and young entrepreneurs into this tech world and using my specialty performance and, and uh, uh, business coaching and what have you into that, not getting paid directly for it, but, but, but from the companies that I'm developing yeah. 
I'm really focusing on that. And then I, I was on the 10 X growth con stage this past uh, March. Oh, congratulations. It took me two years. It took me two years to step on that stage. Hey, <laughs> Thank you. that's awesome. Um, the, the tech thing, is it, is there more that you can tell us about it or a way that people can find out about it or. Uh, yeah. So the best thing to do really, I mean, if you, if you message me and follow me on Instagram, you're going to see all kinds of stuff coming out here very shortly on it, but I have a tech product called blueprinted. It's B L O O printed. This is my, the one I co-founded and this product, basically I looked at digital training and video training and I saw like how ineffective it was. Mm -hmm. And the fact that only 20% of people actually complete the courses. So that means the people that are marketing these courses that are good at marketing are making money without concern for the Correct. success yep. of their student or clients. And I thought that was an ethical problem. And I looked at why people get bored. They don't finish it. They get distracted. They don't retain the information. Uh, or when they get done, they're like, what's the next step? Like, what am I supposed to do? Where do I put that? Mm -hmm. and where, where do I take that? And how long do I do that? And so I, I thought to myself, what if there was a way to have a project management based software technology that has a marketplace where people that have had success can come in and algorithmically step-by-step step, put the success steps to what they've done, whatever vertical it's in, mm -hmm. build that blueprint in our platform and then sell it on the marketplace to, to people that want to know how to be successful in that area. So it could be anything from a business to a podcast to digital marketing agency, whatever it is. Because if you, you know, if you're going to build a house, you wouldn't want to watch a YouTube video on, a, on building that house. <laughs> no. right? You want the blueprint. Right. So this is a market disruptor, industry disruptor. And I can also see another industry being created from this. Like there's web designers when websites came out. Well, there's going to be a lot of people that don't want to build their own blueprints. They want to take the content and give it to somebody and have them do the blueprint for them. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a whole industry just on blueprinters. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, this is a phenomenal thing and it's coming out hopefully in the next 60 days, give or take. And uh, I'm just fired up to get it in people's hands, man. That's great, man. You got a lot of irons in the fire. I like it. Yeah, buddy. That's Thank awesome. You. All right. So I want everybody to go and check out your podcast. The book is released on May 3rd called Rocket Fuel. Get in touch with you on, on any of the social media. What's the best way to get in touch with you? On Instagram. Okay. Instagram or LinkedIn, either one, but Instagram, it's Mikey C. Rock. Mikey C. Rock on Instagram. Yep. Perfect. All right, man. This was a, a pleasure for me. I love talking to another Paisan. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And uh, it was great. And I really wish you a ton of luck with the book. I'll make sure when uh, this episode gets released, I'll have a cover of the book. This will also go like you do on your podcast. We'll go to the YouTube channel so people will visually be able to see it. Um, I'll put the link to the, you know, to Amazon in there. Um, anything else I can do to help, let me know. But it was a real pleasure to speak with you. I appreciate your well, time. Thank man. you. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. It was a great interview. Great questions. And I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you, man. You take care. Good luck with the book. Good luck with the podcast. Good luck with the tech software and everything else. And uh, have just have a, a, an amazing year. Thank you. You too, bud. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I want to thank you for listening to my podcast. I know you have many options to listen to various podcasts. And I'm honored that you chose to listen to mine. I would love it if you would rate my podcast five stars and write a nice review. It really helps to bring up the rankings of the podcast to other listeners. Once again, thank you so much for listening to The Joe Costello Show. I appreciate you very much. Mm -hmm.